Spike in earthquake activity has scientists paying close attention to Mount St. Helens. After the snow melts, and we pick them up usually in September, October, download the data, and it gives us a little bit of extra information about ground deformation in the Yellowstone region. Yellowstone Rising, Scientists Probe, Mysterious Ground, Uplift, After Mount St. Helens, Earthquakes and Ashfall, Yellowstone National Park, WI, Beneath the Forests, Geysers and Steaming Hot Springs of Yellowstone. The ground itself appears to be stirring once more. Instruments across the park are showing an unusual and accelerating uplift of the soil, an upward bulging of the earth that geologists track closely. For clues about what is happening in the volcanic system, below. This development comes at a time of heightened seismic and volcanic unrest elsewhere in the Pacific Northwest. A swarm of earthquakes beneath Mount St. Helens, along with fresh ash emissions drifting eastward from that volcano. Now, with Yellowstone showing an unexpected response, scientists are working urgently to determine whether the events are linked, and if so, what they might mean for the stability of the region. The Alarm at Yellowstone Yellowstone has long been a focus of fascination and concern. Sitting atop one of the world's largest volcanic systems, the park is no stranger to slow cycles of uplift and subsidence. Typically, the caldera floor rises and falls by a few centimeters per year as underground magma and hydrothermal fluids shift. But recent measurements from GPS stations and INSAR satellites indicate that some areas of the caldera, particularly near the Norris Geyser Basin and Yellowstone Lake, are rising more quickly than usual. Instead of gradual seasonal swelling, scientists are now detecting uplift rates of several centimeters per month. A pace that, while not unprecedented, is enough to raise eyebrows in the geological community. We see Yellowstone breathe all the time, explains Dr. Marissa Grant, a geophysicist with the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. But this recent rise stands out. It's sharper, faster, and coincides with unusual activity to the west at Mount St. Helens. That coincidence is what makes us pay extra attention. The Swarm at Mount St. Helens On the western flank of the Cascade Range, Mount St. Helens has been restless. Over the past month, seismic stations recorded hundreds of earthquakes, ranging from tiny microquakes to noticeable magnitude 3 tremors. These quakes cluster at depths of 2 to 10 km, suggesting movement of magma, or hot fluids, within the volcanic edifice. On several occasions, gas-charged magma reached shallow enough depths to produce ash plumes, sending fine volcanic particles into the atmosphere. Winds carry this ash eastward across Washington, Idaho, and under certain conditions. As far as Wyoming, depositing a faint gray film even across parts of Yellowstone. Ashfall at Yellowstone is not new. Past eruptions of St. Helens and other Cascades volcanoes have sent particles into the park. But arriving during a phase of rapid ground uplift, the coincidence has stirred scientific curiosity. Ash and Earth, could they interact? Ash may seem insignificant, a thin dusting on the ground, but its effects on soil and hydrology can be profound. Volcanic ash alters how soils absorb and release water sometimes trapping moisture near the surface, sometimes sealing off infiltration. 
In wet conditions, ash can form impermeable crusts or waterlogged muds. At Yellowstone, where thermal features already rely on delicate balances of heat, water and gas, even small surface changes can ripple through the system. Ash insulating the ground could mean hotter soils. Ash mixing with snow or rain could increase pore pressures underground. And ash clogging hydrothermal vents might redirect fluids in unpredictable ways. Some volcanologists speculate that this combination added Surface stress from ash and deeper magma or fluid movement could explain the current uplift pattern. Stress transfer from St. Helens to Yellowstone? Beyond ash, there's the question of earthquakes. Can seismic unrest at Mount St. Helens physically influence Yellowstone over 700 miles away? Most scientists agree that direct triggering of magma movement across such distances is unlikely. However, subtle stress changes in the North American crust, caused by distant quakes or even global seismic waves, have been known to nudge hydrothermal systems into action. In Yellowstone, for example, distant earthquakes as far away as Alaska have sometimes reawakened geysers. So, while St. Helens quakes may not be pushing magma into Yellowstone, they might be adding another nudge to an already restless system. Yellowstone's Inner Workings At the heart of Yellowstone lies a vast and complex magmatic system. Shallow magma chamber just a few kilometers below the surface, partly crystalline, partly molten, A larger, deeper magma reservoir extending down tens of kilometers. Networks of hydrothermal fluids heated by magma, circulating through cracks and fractures, feeding geysers and hot springs. When magma or hot fluids accumulate in the upper crust, the land above rises like bread dough inflating. That's what scientists suspect is happening now. Pressure is building. Whether from magma recharge or expanding hydrothermal reservoirs, 